Hi, I'm Basil Assaf and welcome back to Pathology Dynamics. Today we will talk about rabies disease caused by rabies virus. Rabies virus belongs to the family Rhabdoviridae and Rhabdo in Greek means rod and it's called this way because under electron microscope you can see that the viruses look like rods or bullet shape. This is a picture from an infected cell and you can see these big factories of virus called Negri bodies as we will describe later on the histopathology slide from which rod shaped viruses are budding out. The life cycle of the virus is very interesting. When an infected animal transmits the virus through biting, the saliva from the infected animal carries the virus with it. The virus replicates in the skeletal muscle and then from the skeletal muscle transmits through the neuromuscular junction into the peripheral nerve. And then the virus transports in retrograde, in reverse, to the spinal cord and then again from the spinal cord backwards to the brain. In the brain, the virus replicates and then transports enterograde through peripheral nerves to the salivary gland and other tissues. In the salivary gland, the virus infects the acid or epithelial cells and a new viral progeny is produced. The direct action of the virus on the peripheral nerve innervating the salivary gland stimulates the salivary gland to produce excessive amount of saliva carrying the new viral progeny to the new host. I will not go into extensive details on the histology of the brain. However, I will touch on a few main elements Elements. The central nervous system under the microscope is divided into a gray matter which contains the neuronal cell bodies and white matter that contains the axons of these neurons. In addition, there are glial cells that support the health of the neurons and blood vessels that transport nutrients and oxygen to the tissue. The area in between is called the neuropil and it looks pink under the microscope. If you are interested in more details about the histology and anatomy of the brain, this is a great website from the University of Minnesota School of Veterinary Medicine. Before we go into the histopathology, one thing worthy of noting is that rabies virus not only infects dogs, but it can infect many carnivores, including raccoons, skunks, and minks. The virus also can infect horses and cows, as well as bats. And in fact, raccoons and bats are the main source of infection in humans in the United States. This is a case from a cow, and this is a cross-section of the medulla oblongata. Under low magnification, we can already appreciate some areas showing showing basophilia, which indicates there are cellular aggregates in these regions. At high magnification, we can see that the clear spaces around blood vessels, referred to as Verkaurobin spaces, contain several layers of mononuclear cells composed of lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. And this is called perivascular cuff. Here are additional examples of perivascular cuffs. At higher magnification, we can see within the neurons are several eosinophilic 2 to 4 micron intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies, and these are called Negri bodies. This is the virus factories that we described earlier in the video. Additionally, there is increased number of glial cells forming nodules, and this is called gliosis. Here is additional example of Negri bodies intracytoplasmic inclusions. And this is pretty much it about rabies disease. It's perivascular lymphoplasmacytic cuffs, glial nodules, and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. This is is another case from a mink and the features are essentially the same. If we look at the hippocampus and the hippocampal neurons, we can see intracytoplasmic Negri bodies inclusions, but this case additionally has spongiosis. This is a recent important paper describing the best location to detect Negri bodies for the diagnosis of rabies in different animal species. And here is a summary of that paper. In dogs and also cats, the best location to look for Negri bodies is in the hippocampus. In the cow, as we examine in our slide, brainstem, which is this region here, is the best location to look for inclusion bodies, and cerebellum can work as well. In horses, however, the best location to detect it is in the cervical spinal cord. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and as usual, special thanks to the Joint Pathology Center for providing these slide scans. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and make sure you view the previous videos as well. And don't forget to spread the knowledge by sharing this video with friends and colleagues, and subscribe to the channel so you can receive all the new videos. Thank you.